when you look at the number of cases increasing um, around Europe and in other parts of the world and how quickly they're increasing, were we too complacent in opening the economy? There was a belief that actually this would hit in fall, but it's come much quicker. Yeah, I mean, I don't think what we're seeing at the moment uh, is a second wave. It's, it's a continuation of the first wave because, you know, even in the countries and the areas where the infection levels had fallen because of, you know, the measures that were taken um, and, and the number of cases had dropped, the virus hadn't gone away. Um, and so that's what we're seeing, really, in those areas of Europe where, where spikes of cases are occurring. Um, and what needs to happen is that those individual outbreaks need to be, you know, pushed down again um, to, to stop um, the, the spread again. You know, the sort of second wave that people are talking about potentially will come in, in Europe, at least in, in sort of October time, um, you know, with the advent of winter. What is the one thing that you think will change in people's minds as we learn more about the virus? D does it also hit a lot of young people who think they're fairly immune to it? Uh, I, I think, you know, it's going to change everybody's response to, to life going forward because, you know, this is something that, <clears throat> you know, hasn't happened to us for over a century. Certainly at the moment, you know, it, 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 there is growing evidence that, that young people are not as hard hit. Um, there was an interesting paper came out as a preprint over the weekend, actually, that um, suggests that there's cross-reactivity between existing coronaviruses, so the coronaviruses that, you know, have circulated for, for many, many years and, and caused mild colds, um, and uh, SARS coronavirus. Now, we don't know if that's a protective <coughs> response, but it's interesting that, you know, most coronavirus infections of those types are in younger people, particularly children sort of, you know, five and under, um, you know, in whom SARS-CoV doesn't seem to be quite as severe. So, you know, maybe there is a little bit of cross-protection <coughs> there for existing coronaviruses in, in younger people. But um, it, it, this is an evolving pandemic and, and right. we'll need to all make sure that we continue to take the measures that we're all taking. Uh, Dr. Valeria, you're one of our great clinical virologists, also one of our great educators, your distance learning program at Manchester and such. I want you to distance learn us right now about your take on back to school of the many, many young people clashing up against teachers themselves, et cetera. When you see all the debate over this, how do you how do you synthesize that? Given your work on Zika, given your work on congenital virology, how do you how do you take in the back to school debate? It's a balance, isn't it? So, uh, it will going back to school properly in September um, cause increase in in circulation of the virus probably you know you only have to look in in playgrounds now the schools are all broken up for summer and you know all the kids are out and, and they don't know how to socially distance they just can't do it and you know certainly the schools that my children go to I, i'm i know that the measures they're putting in place and uh, you know they're going to do the very best that they possibly can but it will cause an, an increase in circulation and, and you know as i've just been <coughs> talking about i don't think for the children themselves that's going to be very significant, but potentially what the children will do is, is take the virus home, you know, to their families, um, and, you know, some of them may be quite vulnerable people. So, but, but on the other hand, you know, we can't have a situation where we don't have children in school for another year um, because there's just so many economic, social, mental health issues um, with, with not having children in school. So it, it is a balance, but... It's a risk. It's a, all we can do, I think, is to take the best precautions we can. Um, yeah. What would be really good would be testing. You know, if we could have a, um, a very simple point of care test where a, a, you know, a child could uh, take a test before they went to school every morning, that would yeah. be great, wouldn't it? Do you, do you have in your head, all these weeks on, a ratio of death to cases, or is that still a mystery? I think it, it's got to be a bit of a mystery um, that because the, the sort of fatality rate seems to vary from, from place to place, and it probably depends on the level of testing. So, you know, where the level of testing is greater, you're going to get more negatives, uh, and so the, the ratio will fall. Where the 
um, ratio of testing is not as good, um, then the, the percentage of people who die as a result of those who've been tested positive is higher. Uh, so we don't know, and we probably won't know that until we do you know, strong epidemiological studies um, over the next year or so.